Microsoft has said, no, you're not getting Game Pass on your Steam Deck, so suck it up and buy a Legion Go. All right, they didn't really say that, but what they did say is that the Xbox is a publisher and a platform, and they were talking specifically about putting their games on other platforms. And in order to reassure their core Xbox customers, they said that all first party titles will continue to come to Xbox. All first party titles will continue to be on Game Pass day one, asterisk. And, and third, we know that Game Pass will only be available on Xbox. Xbox. We'll so talk about that, what games Microsoft is bringing to other platforms, plus why, the, why I think the PC is currently the best place to build your gaming library and how Microsoft has kind of painted themselves into a corner just like Nintendo did with Metroid Prime 4. But real quick, before we unpack this, I wanted to say that over half of the people that watch my videos still aren't subscribed. I'd love to be able to get that silver play button this year. So if you've ever found the videos that I put out on this channel helpful or entertaining or interesting, and you wanna make sure that you see more of them, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And while you're at it, while you're down there, click the like button too. It helps out a ton. This episode is brought to you by Cook Unity, which is the first chef to consumer platform that delivers freshly prepared, pre-selected meals right to your door every week. It's incredibly easy and effortless. Choose a subscription plan and select from hundreds of meals each week prepared by award-winning chefs. If you can't or don't have time, Cook Unity is happy to select the meals for you based on your taste preferences. Tonight, I'm eating the spinach and cheese enchilada suisses made by Chef Ivy Stark in New York. I get super busy with my full-time job and my YouTube channel, and since Cook Unity meals are delivered fully cooked, all I have to do is heat them up. Dinner is done in as little as five minutes. No more cleanup and meal planning. I also like that the subscription is super flexible. You could choose from four to 16 meals per week. Meal plans are flexible and commitment free. You can skip deliveries, pause or cancel anytime. So get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals. Go to cookunity.com slash nerdnest50 and use my code nerdnest50 at checkout to try them for yourself. Thanks to Cook Unity for sponsoring this episode. Let's start with Game Pass on the Steam Deck. Ever since the Steam Deck came out, people have been asking for Game Pass on the Steam Deck, myself included. Microsoft went so far as to show us how we could get Xbox Cloud Gaming running on our Steam Decks. It's certainly, it's not a difficult process, but they could make it a whole lot easier by simply adding Xbox Cloud Gaming to Steam. But that isn't really what people are asking for. That's not what I want anyway. What I want is to have access to Game Pass games running locally on my Steam Deck. We've asked and we've asked and we've asked, and now we have a definitive answer, and it isn't something that you're going to like. But I've thought about it, and it makes sense for a reason that nobody seems to be talking about. More on that in a bit. If you want to play Game Pass games, you have a few options. You could get an Xbox. You could use Xbox Cloud Gaming on your device of choice. You could install Windows on your Steam Deck, although that's not something I would ever do. Um, you could get a Windows uh, handheld like the ROG Ally or the Lenovo Legion Go. More information on the possibility of an Xbox handheld later on in the video, by the way. But what you won't be able to do is get Game Pass on the Steam Deck because they followed their promise that all first party titles will be on Game Pass with this statement. We know that Game Pass will only be available on Xbox. That's a direct quote. So it looks like if you were really hoping that Game Pass would come to Steam Deck like I was, then you're out of luck. If you think about it, it makes a lot of sense though. How would Microsoft make that happen? I think the way that makes the most sense for Microsoft to make that happen would be for them to find a way for you to link your Steam account to your Game Pass account. And then once they're linked, you get access to Game Pass games 
on your Steam account. The same way that sometimes I get access to games before they come out as a beta code instead of the actual game. If you then stop subscribing, you would lose your access to those games. In theory, that could work, but here's the rub. The thing is that nobody is talking about is how does Game Pass report your playtime? To my understanding, and I could be wrong about this, the way that Game Pass works is Microsoft pays publishers and devs to get games on the service. They most likely pay an upfront cost, and then they pay based on how much playtime each game gets. So games that end up with more playtime earn more money for those devs. But that means that Microsoft has to be able to track which games are getting the most playtime. Using the Game Pass app on a Windows PC or on an Xbox, they can easily do that. But if I'm playing on Steam Deck or playing on Steam, how does that information get reported back to Microsoft? I don't know if it can. Perhaps Valve and Microsoft could work something out, but who knows if that would ever happen. So no Game Pass on Steam Deck. But Microsoft is bringing more of their games to more places. I'm sorry, did I say more of their games? I mean four of their games to more places. Of course, when I say more places, I'm talking about Nintendo Switch and PlayStation because Microsoft has already been really fantastic about bringing their games, their first party titles to Steam. So we're going to have all of the games that Microsoft makes available on Steam because Microsoft, they, they understand that selling their games on Steam means more money. Later on in the video, we'll talk about whether or not Sony has woken up to this realization yet. Spoilers, they have. I just finished watching the Microsoft business update on the official Xbox podcast, and Phil Spencer was kind of cagey and didn't really say exactly which games would be coming to other platforms, but he did say what games wouldn't be coming to other platforms. And it's the games that a lot of Xbox fans were worried about, specifically their major first party tentpole releases like Starfield or Indiana Jones. Those are not going to be coming to other consoles, although they will be coming to Steam, thank goodness. He also hedged his bet and said that he doesn't see any good reason to rule any game go out for going to any platform. Right now, those games won't be coming to PS5, maybe someday in the future. So what games are? Well, they broke them into two groups, which are multiplayer community-based games, where it's very important that you have a large pool of players in order for the game to survive. And then two games that he said weren't really <clears throat> tentpole releases that were supposed to drive people towards Xbox anyway. Let's take a look at what they said and see if we can figure out exactly which games they're talking about. Let's start with the two games that are community games. I think that we probably have three options here and two of them are far more likely. If there's something that I'm not thinking of, let me know in the comments down below that like button. But I think we're looking at Grounded and Sea of Thieves as possibilities. I think this move makes a lot of sense, but at the same time, I don't know if these games are going multi-platform is really going to help them out all that much. What I'd really like to see is a game like Halo Infinite, although I find that to be far less likely. It's a really good game. It got panned when it came out because people didn't like the battle pass, but the actual gameplay loop is fantastic. The single player mode was awesome and Microsoft definitely over promised when it came to multiplayer campaign stuff, but the story mode was a blast. Multiplayer is incredibly fun and Microsoft could just ship the multiplayer onto other platforms in order to get people more interested in Halo and drive them back to the Xbox and the PC for story mode. In fact, that's something that they alluded to on the official Xbox podcast. The other two games are games that are non-tentpole single player games. One of them I think is, I mean, it's the one that everybody was talking about, Hi-Fi Rush. And that's a fantastic game. And I don't think that there are many people out there that are buying an Xbox or subscribing to Game Pass for that game specifically. The other is rumored to be Pentiment, which I actually had to look up. So that's another good thing to put on other platforms. I think these both make sense. And Microsoft 
aren't the only ones starting to ship their games in to other places. Recently, Sony said this, in the past, we wanted to popularize console and first party titles. The main purpose was to make the console popular. It is true, but there's a synergy to it. So if you have a strong first party content, not only with our console, but also with other platforms like computers, first party can be grown with multi-platform and that can help the operating profit to improve. So that is another way that we want to proactively work on. I personally think that there are opportunities out there for improvement of margins. So I would like to go aggressive in improving our margin performance. I can't say that I'm surprised here. We've we've seen both Xbox and Sony move their libraries to PC. Sony's been doing it very strategically where say like a sequel to a series is about to release on PlayStation and Sony releases the first one or the most recent one as a game on PC. This can do a lot to help grow first party platforms for Sony. And Microsoft even alluded to this during their podcast. This is yet another reason why right now is one of the best times to be a PC gamer and to build your library on Steam. Look, we've seen tons of Microsoft properties show up on Steam for a while now, and Sony's been doing that as well. But if Sony was looking for a good reason to make sure that their games are coming to Steam day and date with the PS5, just look at Helldivers 2. It is their fastest selling PC game from Sony to date. And for a really good reason, because that game is fantastic. I'm not going to gush all over again here, but last week on the Nerd Nest podcast, we talked extensively about Helldivers 2. It's a really fun game with a succinct and satisfying gameplay loop. It's only $40. I've been playing it on PS5, but I've been told it runs pretty well on the deck as well. So I guess it might need some settings gymnastics, according to Valve. But don't expect Sony to start shipping their games to Xbox anytime soon. In fact, Phil Spencer was asked about Helldivers 2, and here's what he had to say over on IGN. I will say that when I look at a game like Helldivers 2, and it's a great game, kudos to the team shipping it on PC and PlayStation, I'm not exactly sure who it helps in the industry by not being on Xbox. If you try and twist yourself to say, like, somehow that benefited somebody somewhere, but I get it, there's a legacy in console gaming that we're we're going to benefit by shipping games and not putting them other places. We do the same thing. And while it's absolutely true what he's saying, nobody really benefited from that, I also think it makes it easier for a team, especially a smaller team publishing a smaller game, to be able to focus on one console at a time and maybe bring Helldivers over later, though I don't see Sony doing that. That being said, I don't know that we'll see Sony push for day one releases on PC for most of their first party games. It makes a lot of sense for them to do so for a games as a service style games like Helldivers 2, which depend on large communities of people in order to succeed. I think that Sony's current strategy is probably the best way for them to do it released first on PlayStation and then bring it to PC later. Though I do think that the lag time between a PS5 release and the PC release could be a lot shorter. And I hope that's what they mean when they talk about being more aggressive. There isn't really a chance that Sony loses by bringing their games to PC. The people that spent a shitload of money on their PC are the kind of people that if they were going to buy a PS5, they would have bought one already. So that's customers that currently Sony can't reach. Get those games out on PC as fast as you can, and I guarantee, Sony, people will be buying them. I will say that as a fan of handheld consoles, these games coming to Steam is very important to me, but I, I think soon we're going to see some more competition from both Microsoft and Sony in the handheld space. We've recently seen rumors that Sony was partnered with AMD in order to work on a handheld APU. Whether or not anything comes from that partnership is a long way off. Microsoft has said they expect a big hardware announcement later on this year, and there are people that are assuming that it's going to be an Xbox handheld, but I don't really get why everyone is making that assumption. 
Nothing in what Sarah Bond actually said on the podcast suggested handheld to me. To be clear, I do believe that Microsoft is working on a handheld, and I do believe that they're going to be announcing some kind of hardware at the end of the year, but who knows what it'll be. Maybe it'll just be a controller. As far as Sony, I don't anticipate them bringing anything out anytime soon either, but maybe I've been wrong before. Speaking of wrong, Microsoft said that the next Xbox is going to be the biggest leap in a generation. I think that they're probably wrong about that. I'm skeptical, we'll see. It seemed odd to me that Microsoft would pre-announce this announcement, but I feel like they kind of painted themselves into a corner with this. With rumors swirling around that they were going to go third party and exit the hardware business, I'm reminded of Nintendo announcing Metroid Prime 4 well before they should have. They didn't really have a choice at the time. They had just announced the Nintendo Switch three months earlier it had come out. And then to announce Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS might make it look like Nintendo wasn't confident with what was going on with the Switch, especially because the Switch didn't have a lot of games at that point. So Nintendo had to make an announcement to satisfy the people that just bought their brand new console. This is just like Microsoft pre-announcing their new hardware in order to convince fans that they weren't going to exit the hardware uh, business and assuade worries that people had made bad choices by buying an Xbox. Though I will say, we still haven't seen Metroid Prime 4, so who knows what we will see this holiday season. I can't wait to find out. One thing's for sure, the era of exclusives is over and the PC is now one of the best places to build your library. Pretty much every third party game ends up on PC. Indies start there and now both Sony and Microsoft are dropping their games there as well. It's a great time to be a PC gamer. I just hope that Microsoft changes course with Game Pass and brings it to Steam Deck. I also hope that you'll watch this video right here from the Nerd Nest. I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.